Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another podcast about the issues of life and the goodness of God in those issues. And so there is a way and there is a hope. And most definitely there is a truth. And we can find that in his scriptures. I'd like to start there. We've talked about thankfulness and being thankful is key. But knowing how to become thankful. Knowing what's expected of us down here. How to get through life's issues and and troubles and struggles and and stressors. is simply found in, in the scriptures. It's found in the Bible. And the Bible is a gift of God's goodness left for us to know who he is and that the hope that we do have in him. And here is described for us exactly the information that God wants us to know about him. And so we should pick it up and we should read it. It's like when we get into a relationship with a person that, we, that we're starting to love and starting to know. Well, we want as much information about them as possible. And God has given that in his goodness through his scriptures. That's right. Inside this Bible are 66 books that are so beautifully woven together and all point to God and all point to all his characteristics and his attributes. God's love, God's goodness, his mercy, his long suffering towards us, his kindness and his gentleness. And it also points and leads us out of temptation, out of the issues of life that we get ourselves into. And so this is where I wanted to start. The goodness of God. Inside is the goodness of God here. Uh, I would like to suggest that we all begin or you begin if you haven't really read scripture or if it's been a while that you start in the book of John. And John is in the New Testament and it is the Gospels. There's four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they all give a certain character of who Jesus is. But in John, the book of John is so beautifully written that it tells us that Jesus Christ is God. That Jesus Christ came and left his heavenly abode and came and dwelt with us in the flesh so that God could know what it was like to put on human flesh, to feel the pulls of it, the temptations, the the tiredness of the body. God is well acquainted, and therefore he can be faithful to minister to us. And on top of that, he accomplished what we could not. He lived a sinless, perfect life. And because of the bigness of that life, being God in the flesh, he was able to sacrifice himself so that we could have eternal life because that's what we were destined for, eternal life. And then sin entered into our life. I simply like to call sin selfishness. It's what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. And God ultimately knows what's best for us, but we rebel, every one of us. Scripture tells me that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that sin, there's a wage. It's it's what we've earned. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And these are truths. I I encourage everyone, if you have not read it in a while, go back and read the book of John again. It's a beautiful start. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And a little later down in the verse, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Inside the book of John, you'll see listed 85 times the word believe or believe not. And what God is asking us to to do is to believe certain aspects of of himself. The greatest being Jesus Christ. Believe that he is God. Believe on him for eternal life and what he has done. And that's where we start. We start by believing that God is. And secondly, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. As we mentioned before, life is short and it goes fast. Scripture says, then comes judgment. 
there's a, a time appointed unto man, then comes judgment. Everyone is, is judged on their works. And our works will never measure up to what God has called us to, a sinless, perfect life. And so we can't do that because of our selfishness, because we have fallen short of the mark. And so nothing can make up for that. So God in his great love for you and for me sent his only begotten son and he sacrificed him. And that's a love I quite can't understand. But I tell you one thing, I can believe it. I can believe it because God says he has made himself manifest in creation. He surrounds me. I look out at the ocean and the mountains and the trees and the birds. And I know there's a creator. Everybody believes God. They might not confess it, but down deep in their heart, God has placed that knowledge in them. And so he has given them uh, an opportunity to come to the greatest knowledge of all, that God would love you so much that he would put on human flesh and walk what we should have walked and then sacrificed himself so that we could be with him. Because again, life is short. This is not it down here. It's what happens after here. Because everyone's going to send, spend some place in eternity. We all live eternal. We're eternal creations, beings. We have a soul. And so you can either be with God, the ultimate goodness, or you can spend eternity without God. So I'd like to say, let's get the first issue of that locked up about who God is, about who Jesus Christ is and his great love. Scripture says in Romans that, that God, he, he had demonstrated his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Like we weren't even friends. There was no good in us. And Christ decided that, yes, I love them enough. Remember, but for the joy that was set before me, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And if you put it in context, then uh, he endured the cross, despising the shame for enemies of him. And so God wants to be our friend. And he wants us to be his friend. And so that's called a relationship. And that relationship is built on getting to know the one who loves us. And isn't that what we want? And from there, the issues of life get taken care of. And they're getting taken care of in the scriptures. When he tells us things to do, like cast your cares upon me because I careth for you. These are beautiful words of a loving God towards us who says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. And so that's his promise. Book of Hebrews says, it is impossible for God to lie. Wow. And, and scripture says all men are liars, but not God. And so why don't we follow the one who loves us and died for us? And let's start there in the book of John. 66 books in the Bible woven together beautifully. 27 in the New Testament talk about God, talk about Jesus Christ and his walk, and talk about the way, the truth, and the life. And it's through believing. The book of John, remember, 85 times the word believe. Believe this and don't believe that. And so that's what I'm going to encourage you for today on this podcast. I want you to believe. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus Christ. And believe this book and start there. And we're going to walk this thing together. Now, I'd like to say this always. Remember, you pray for me and I'll pray for you. If you have a prayer request, send it on. I'd be more than happy to pray for it and lift you up before our Heavenly Father because he does answer prayers. We've already talked about that. He is faithful. I love that, that one quality about him. He is always faithful and he is good and he knows exactly where you're at and he knows exactly what you need. And so when he says, cast your cares upon me, mm, why don't we do that? Why don't we just cast our cares upon him and wait upon the Lord? All right. So that's an encouraging word. And we're going to travel all through this Bible. And I'm going to try to get there with you because, uh, it's inexhaustible. I mean, it's eternal, this book, God's book. And so I can never 
finish ever talking about God because he goes on and on. He always was. In the beginning, God created the beginning, so he was before the beginning. That's the good news. And he knows us intimately well, and we were created in his image to glorify him. So why don't we cast our cares upon him and let go of the strings that attach us to this world and start looking at the one who made us and knows us, okay? So that's a word of encouragement. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for joining me. And uh, let us lift our eyes towards heaven and really experience what God wants us to, his great love for us. All right? I love you. And I will see you on my next podcast, I guess. All right. Ciao.